I treat letters as conversations. You have short conversations perhaps while waiting at the bus stop or in the queue at the supermarket. Longer conversations with friends over a cuppa. I like to write letters in public, be it in a cafe, pub or on occasions in the library, but I am in good company with my pen friends. I have finished reading the paper and put out my stationery ready to reply to a letter, but I had forgotten to bring it with me, so I decided to start the script for this video while I have a nice cup of tea needing to be drunk. What equipment do you need to write letters? Pen and paper are the basics. I have used colourful gel pens and ballpoints. I have also written letters on the computer and printed them out to send by post. However, now I use a fountain pen and the words flow out across the page. Perhaps my handwriting is a little neater than if I use a ballpoint. I can also use different colours of inks via cartridges or bottled ink with a converter. Paper for letter writing comes in various shapes, sizes, colours and designs. You can use plain paper, with or without a guide sheet, lined, dotted or squared. Many people who write letters are in school or college, and A4 refill pads have been used to write letters as well as lecture notes. When I was a teenager, I had a friend who moved away and she wrote letters to me, usually in English class. She is not the only one to have written letters during class. Then there are papers produced for letter writing, some with decorative and cheerful designs. Some might appear childish, but I am in my 40s. I still like Bugs Bunny and other cartoons. I do use diddle writing pads, and I have received letters on diddle paper from people even older than me, including from someone who is a grandfather. Some people like to decorate letters with drawings, stickers and decorative tapes. Embellishments are not necessary but can be pleasing to the eye. Once you have written your letter, you will need an envelope. You can even make your own envelopes from scrapbooking paper, wrapping paper or even from magazine pages. Or if you start with a plain envelope, you can embellish it and send mail art. The address needs to be written clearly. I will write the country in block capitals and often will put the city name in block letters too. As a sender, you might like to put your address on the envelope. I place this on the top left on the front of the envelope. For sealing an envelope, I often use sticky tapes and also stickers. I do sometimes use wax seals, but because there may be a thickness element for the postage rate, or non-machinable surcharge, you need to try not to use too much wax. Now you need to apply postage. First, check the dimensions and the weight, then look up the postage rate either in your postal company's pricing leaflet or their website. I usually have stamps at home and I will use at least one commemorative or special stamp, making up the extra postage to the correct rate if needed. There are some wonderful commemorative stamps issued around the world. I particularly like the Total Solar Eclipse stamp from 2017 and also the shark stamps from the US. If you can't buy commemorative stamps in your local post office, you might like to check out your postal services web shop and order online. Postage and packaging for delivery should be quite reasonable. If you have received post but the stamp has not been marked, do not be tempted to use this for your postage. It is illegal to reuse used stamps for postage. Now you have your letter signed, sealed and stamped. Where do you post the letter? In the United Kingdom, there are iconic red and a few gold post boxes. They are emptied at least daily Monday to Friday, but not all will have a Saturday collection. You can also post at the post office. In the US, some people have mailboxes in their front gardens for their mail to be delivered. They can also leave outgoing mail in the box too for the mail carrier to pick up.